Welcome back to Vintage Story. Um, so, as promised, this is going to be edited down. So, uh, this is uh, just to, just to introduce the series. We are starting fresh. Um, after a little bit of struggle, I came to realize that those monsters were not going away, and I had no real means to uh, defend against them. So, I started a new world with a grace period of five days. I figured that was <clears throat> good enough to try and get things going, get some armor, get some weapons, um, and actually be able to play the game um, as I enjoyed it before I had to deal with uh, these horrible critters, um, dwellers, whatever you want to call them, surface dwellers. So you know, we started a new world, um, and uh, you know, got to got to. Um, I had start on, on napping as soon as I could, tried to find some flint, found some sticks, and uh, got some tools together, got a knife. It's, you know, the, the beginning of Vintage Story is always going to feel a little bit similar, but, um, you know, there there's some, a little bit of, a little, a, a few twists and turns in this that I'm, I'm pretty excited about, uh, first of all, I gotta say, I really do appreciate the vibe of vintage story. It's just a little bit more, I don't know, um, slow than, than Minecraft, but it doesn't feel arduous. It feels meticulous. You know, you really gotta take your time. Um, and I think that that's why I needed to give myself some time before I had to deal with some creatures. Um, so, you know, in the beginning, make some tools, make an ax, uh, get some wood, get some sticks, get some everything. I want you to remember this scene, by the way. Uh, because that's going to come back later. Get some grass so you can get a, a fire going. Um, do a little bit of exploration. But honestly, that first day, I don't know how I would like try and play this game with monsters right away. I don't think I would want to do that. But uh, I made a spear. This is the first time I've tried using a spear. No, I didn't manage to actually get that chicken. I think the chicken drowned, if I'm being honest. But I did um, see what harvesting a chicken looked like trying to you know, get some get some chicken meat i then found this ruin something i really like about vintage story is it gets like discovery and exploration really bang on it feels really exciting to find something even if it doesn't really amount to much because you know as a player you can see the potential in things and i did see the potential in that ruin to kind of restructure it and rebuild it into something uh whole again um, it seemed like a good foundation to start with, so I figure in the future this uh, this foundation will eventually turn into my first workshop. But just to start with, I use one of the uh, surrounding walls as a, a wall. You might question, well, why why don't I build inside? Um, it's I guess for me, I wanted to keep the inside of that foundation a little bit um, clean, so that when I was really ready to start building it up, I would. Uh, I wouldn't have to destroy my, you know, shack, basically. And you're gonna, you're probably not gonna like my shack, but it, uh, it's as, as rustic as rustic can be. You know, it's, it's like your first Minecraft home all over again. You know, hoveled, hoveled up in a, in a hole in the wall. I actually did try to, to dig a hole in one of the surrounding hills, but, um, you, I don't even have a pickaxe and, you know, that's, you know, the limitations of Vintage Story are really harsh. You come to realize how much you take for granted in Minecraft when you can't even get a pickaxe, you, can, you know, until you're basically ready to start um, smelting and stuff like that. So, get uh, of course, got our, get our reeds going so I can in, in, uh, increase our inventory space. Probably the second or third thing you should do besides your tool gathering, your resource gathering get our fire going uh so the you know our little hole starts to feel like an actual home and you might have missed it there but i, I made a, a bed as well so we can actually sleep through the night this is something i may not do in the future well i certainly won't do in the future of this episode because um you know those first five days are pretty crucial you want to get things going as quickly as possible and you don't want to waste time um you know sleeping still burns through your stamina so you may as well work through the night and, and try and do a bit of exploration. So we managed to find some more food. That's the important thing. It's, you know, light enough that I can actually do that. 
and uh, get some more wood, of course. So, you, you know, for firewood and other things. I do, um, at a certain point, try and figure out, well, um, how can I turn this wood into something? How could I use it for like walls and stuff like that? And the answer is um, no, <laughs> not yet. Uh, you need a saw. And of course, if you need a saw, that means you need to do metalworking. Metalworking, it, not yet, basically. So, you know, we got to keep things simple, keep things uh, really down to earth. Um, we, you know, we're lucky if we can do some cooking and that we do actually manage to do some cooking here. So that's good. But, you know, the next step is pottery, right? We want to get some pottery going so we can cook some proper meals, cook some soups. Uh, remember this scene later. It's, it, it was gone in a flash there, but uh, it'll come back. Don't you worry. Um, basically, in order to get pottery going, you gotta you gotta find yourself some clay. So for the next little while, uh, besides trying to you know hunt successfully, trying to get do some resource gathering uh, and exploration, I'm trying desperately to find clay because I don't really like I don't know what it looks like. I gotta get some some pots going, uh, you know. Uh, well, you know, a cooking pot going, some bowls and stuff like that. Found some resin here. Don't yet know what I'm supposed to do with it, but you know, you know how it is. Pick it up now, figure it out later kind of thing. Um, so I start, you know, experimenting. Like, you know how it works in Minecraft. Uh, clay is a resource you can gather in Minecraft, and it's generally found near water, right? Well, um, you know, I come to realize that it doesn't necessarily work that way in Vintage Story. There's our first successful kill, but I, I got lucky because the chicken was in the water, so it was pretty pretty hampered by, uh, you know, trying to swim away. Um, but we man, you know, make some more food. I've been trying to gather these bushes and place them near the home so that I can, uh, get, you know, gather the berries a bit more efficiently. They take about three, I think three or four days to grow more berries, so uh, you want to have a lot of them. Uh, it's, it was around this point where I come to realize, you know, that big old hole uh, of water, watering hole, that the clay just does not form around the water. Please remember this, by the way. That uh, that that spot there, that's about the third time it's appeared. And it's right right in front of my home. Um, that That is all clay. That That spot around the water, I guess there is a little bit of a watering hole. There, so yeah, maybe clay does appear around water, but just not in the way that I'm used to seeing it. Find some copper here, uh, which is nice. And also, I come to realize that copper is something we can find without mining it. Um, this is, you know, some stray copper. There's a really interesting um, kind of like swampish area, uh, you know, like a, a good ways north from our base. Um, but yeah, copper is just something you you can like gather on the ground um, besides like mining it. So here I, I've uh, opted for making use of the night rather than just sleeping through it. Um, well, there'll be plenty of time to try and, uh, you know, hovel against the night later. This is me looking for clay, by the way. And then this is me walking over the clay. And then this is me looking up clay. Um, and trying to figure out where it could possibly be formed, where it, where it could where I could possibly find it, as I'm standing on it, literally standing on it, looking up clay forming, trying to figure out well where 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 are the likely uh, spots where I could find it, while I'm standing on it, literally 10, 10 or twenty minutes standing on the clay as I look it up, and there I finally find. The, what it actually looks like in the um, survival handbook, which I really do appreciate the survival handbook. And I have a solid idea of what it looks like. Fire clay in soil. I do I do try and like dig it up, but here is my my naive uh, kind of like, oh my gosh, you know, discovery. There's there's the firing clay. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it was here the whole time. Um, so I finally know what it looks like and I very enthusiastically start digging it up and of course we want to form some stuff so this is what clay forming looks like it's really cool um i think you know it's it's a process uh basically literally forming your shapes pixel by pixel i know it's not necessarily pixel they're voxels whatever you know you know what i mean and uh 
when it's it's a 3D shape now, so you gotta go kind of like layer by layer. Every you know, when you finish one layer, you you start working on the next one, and then uh, finally you have a full picture of what the shape is and it forms it. I really like this. I think this is a really really cool way of doing things, and uh, you know it makes the process interesting. This is something that of, of course is going to you know later we're gonna it's gonna feel like a chore, but for now I'm kind of really um, you know, in the novelty of it. So here I'm trying to figure out pit kiln desperately. I really don't understand how it works yet. So I figured, well, as long as it's not working for the pot, it may as well also not work for the bowl. So I, you know, try and get some bowls going, um, just just to make use of the time while I try and puzzle the whole thing out. Well, how does a pit kiln work? Well, eventually I dig a hole deeper, and I'm not sure if this that's what made it work, but it did um, like seem to work that way. One one hole deeper um, seemed to seem to work better. So um, because you know you can see our, our pot there is in the right spot basically. So we put the rest of our bowls in um, just so we're making the full use of the pit kiln. Fill it with grass, then fill it with sticks, then fill it with um, firewood. And again, I really appreciate that you know uh, Vintage Story really doesn't mess around when it comes to the process you gotta uh, nothing is taken for granted so a lighter pit kiln and uh, I, I wanted to plan for the eventuality of um, like rain so I, I gave it a little roof um, just in case I didn't I didn't want the pit kiln to be put out by the rain so I don't know if it that it can actually happen that way but I'm, I'm assuming that they've taken you know a lot of things into consideration so there's our first few days, our, our base is built, our tools are, are made, and we figured out clay forming. I hope you enjoyed this. Definitely hit that like button. See you guys next time.